Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Forgive me if I sound a little bit tired, it's because I've had a very rough couple of days from work. But I'm finally, finally found time to sit down and record. I tried to record this yesterday, it came out terrible. So hopefully it comes out better today. And what are we going to be talking about today? The event that's actually going to be coming up pretty soon, which is the next Gouda Gouda. Which, thanks to the most recent panel that they had, which I believe right here, revealed the actual name. The, we know that event is going to be the Great Tea Ceremony Battle, the Gouda Gouda New Yama Taiku, Taiko, Taikoku, uh, the Man Who Returned from Hell, which is going to release September 2nd. So there we go. So chances are September 1st maintenance, and then by the time it's done, it'll be September 2nd. That's my guess. And you'll need to have cleared Lost Belt 4, but we all know that. So that's today's video. going to be looking at the event, and let's go. So, like I said before, this is the tea ceremony from hell, or the man returned from hell. Uh, you need to have cleared Lost Belt 4, so if you haven't gone in uh, through Lost Belt 4 yet, you should really hurry up. <laughs> the event is coming up pretty soon, so make way. Uh, in terms of the event itself, it will feature um, a schedule, like always, as the thing goes by. Like, this should be, like, September 2nd, so this should be September 3rd, 4th. 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and on the 9th day will be the unlock of the final uh, main quest digression extra free quest. But then the 10th drink will be right here. And you'll see each requirement will require uh, a certain amount of tea ceremony points, which will be 18,000, 60,000, 120,000, 190,000, uh, 260,000, 340,000, and 420,000. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it all wrong, but it's fine. Again, I'm very tired. The new units that are going to be coming with this, Rikyu, uh, Kaisuke, and Io, or if I accidentally call her Leo, it's because of Otis from WWE, because he has a very funny story about calling Io Sky Leo Sky. So that's why I say Io the way I do, because that's the way he says it. Uh, and then, of course, Rengoku will have a special outfit that will be an alternate outfit for Okita Alter. The regular version, not the summer version, so where you can have Man Okita, uh, which the best thing about this costume dress to me is the fact that they kept the boob window in the costume. So you can see it here, right there, little man window right there, but then, boom. That's a true difference of character. It's very funny to me that they kept it in the design. I like it. And in terms of the event itself, what kind of event it is, it's a point rewards one where you make tea, basically. Uh, you can see the event mechanics right here. Um, in terms of collection, we'll be getting uh, bowls, oban, and tea whisks, along with green tea leaves, yellow tea leaves, and red tea leaves. Um, you use the tea leaves to brew up specific items, and those items will give you points after you make them, which you can see right here, the stuff you make right there. Get items from the point rewards ladder by gaining the tea ceremony points and then exchange any of the event currency, which is the bowl, the oban, or the whisk and shop. And then, of course, equipping the shop seed that you're going to get, which is the free one, which is Welcome a Journey. That will increase the rate of green tea, green, yellow, and red tea leaves. Um, the gold... Uh, th this I'll look at later, but yeah, it's it's the same basic. All these CEs here, we'll get it. When I go into actually saying what the CEs do, then I'll tell you which ones they are. <laughs> but anyway, new main quest unlock as you get more tea ceremony points, and then finally acquire her after clearing the story. All very basic stuff at this point. Event bonuses, obviously the three new units, they get 50% bond and 100% damage bonus. In terms of a 50% damage bonus and a 20% bond, we'll go to the following Guda Guda servants, which is Okita, Hajime, Cha Cha, Mori, Himiko, uh, no Demon King Nobunaga, specifically Avenger Nobunaga, and Okita Alter. The non summer version, and then of course all the other Guda Guda mainstays at this point. Um, they get 20% bond and 30% attack bonus, and then Mash gets the basic 30% damage bonus and 5% to all party members. Um, the event cards, event CE, obviously, is Welcome to a Journey, which is going to be the free CE that you'll be able to purchase in the shop. Uh, Buster up 8%, Quick up 8%, NP generation up rate 5%, and starting NP gain 30%. And when it gets max limit broken, this will obviously turn into 50%, and so it's another free 50% starting in pier. And then, of course, green tea leaves, yellow tea leaves, and red tea leaves will draw plus one when you have it equipped. 
two craft essences, which are EXP cards. One's featuring EO and the other one featuring um, Rick Q. Uh, Event Command Codes, Consort of the Sun, which is the 5 star, inflict burn for, uh, f uh, inflicts burn of 500 for 3 turns when attacking with the engraved card. Engraved card gets critical damage up 15%. The Eternity Mirror, which gains immunity to skill seal, MP seal, card seal for 1 time, 2 turns when attacking with the engraved card. That's the 4 star. And the third one is uh, the 3 star, which is Ocha Nobu, which engraved on quick cards remove 1 ailment debuff. Ailment debuffs are Poison, Curse, or... Um, burning when attacking with the engraved card and then increase max HP by 100 for one turn when attacking with the engraved card. Uh, the updates, they'll be in a Okita Altar buff to one of her skills, which is going to be to this one right here and increases the, it will be to Kyokuchi, which will go from A to A+. Plus. It increases own damage against sky attribute enemies for three turns, that's the new effect on it. And then Mori will get a buff to Blood Soaked Recklessness going from A to A+. Plus. Grant self on attack activated buff for three turns. It's an upgrade. Inside the Da Vinci's Workshop, if you did not get it beforehand, you can get the Hori over here by from Okita. Uh, it will cost you two mana prisms unless you have cleared Solomon, in which case it will be free. Next, inside the shop itself, <clears throat> for the Ceramic Bowl, which if you want to collect everything in the Ceramic Bowl uh, shop, it will cost you 4550 you can buy the Memorial Outfit for EO, which is a special outfit that we will look at later when I actually go after EO. One copy of EO, two copies of the Event C, which is Welcome to a Journey. After you've unlocked the 10th drink, 16 um, of Serving Coins and a Crystallized Lore. Um, and then the other things inside the Material Shop are Scarabs of Wisdom, the Black Tallow or Pots, um, Phoenix Plum, Unforgettable Ashes, and a Code Opener. 20 Saber Golden Statues, 20 Lancer Golden Statues, and Berserkers, and this will be true for the Silvers, and a Golden Foe for Attack and HP, one of each, and uh, you can exchange for QP once you've um, gotten everything and you still have bowls of some kind. For Oban, which is the Silver Currency, uh, similar to the first one, like I said, it's Welcome Journey, it's uh, 10 sets of the Servant Coins of a trade limit of 16, um, Crystallized Lore, Code Opener, and then the the things that are here for it, um, Lamp of the Demon Ceiling, Infinity Gear, uh, Magatama, Dragon Fang, and then Silver, um, Saber, Lancer, and Berserker statues, along with one Golden Foe. Um, and then, again, Bronze, which will require a total of 4,150 to get everything. The the coins, just like the other ones, the Welcome Journey, the Code Opener, just like the other ones, and then the specific material for here is the Crown of the Radiant Silver, it is Ancient Bells of Tranquility, it is Heroes Proofs, I need those, uh, 30 Unlucky Bones, an again, another Golden Foe, this one either being Attack or HP, I am too tired to remember at the moment which one is which. <laughs> between the difference of them. I should learn them at some point, though. But when, uh, the way I use foes is I do them all at the same time, so I'm never 100% sure which is which. Uh, silver foes for attack and HP, 20 each, of course, as always. Then, of course, 55 EXP, 104 EXP, and 100 silver EXP, if you so choose to want that. Uh, and then, finally, tea leaves. You can obviously trade any of the green, yellow, or red for any of the other that you need, but of course it will require four, so make sure to think before you actually do that. And then the things you can make with the tea is a variety of things, which is like sweet tea, bitter tea, and roasted green tea, which you unlock after getting clearing the first drink, which will require different levels here. And you can see here all the different things that you can kind of make, which is like dragon fang, chain of fool, uh, magical fluid, uh, Idrisil Seed and 1 million QP. And depending on which style of which one of these you use, it has a higher chance of getting one of the materials over the other, which you can see here by the number high next to it. Um, and this will unlock after you clear first drink, which is the main quest. And then second drink, you get Matcha, clear fifth drink, clear sixth drink, eighth drink, clear digression, clear extra one, clear extra four, and then clear the final quest, the Guda Guda Perfect Day for Tea Ceremony. You can get a bunch of cool stuff in here, which is nice. Not a lot, a lot of nice material stuff that you can focus down on. It's a very interesting uh, approach to the point system where it's like, oh yeah, make tea, get material, get points. Kind of cool. 
interested to see it for myself because like I usually say uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning I don't play JP so a lot of the time it's me looking at the the quest and going like oh interesting but yeah like I said main quest free quest obviously challenge quest which I will not I usually don't take a look at but I will acknowledge that there is a challenge quest that will unlock after the final tea ceremony or after clearing the final quest Hopefully, I just I say this every single time. Hopefully, the reason I don't go over them is because specifically I'd like to be in the dark when I challenge it with potentially my brother there. But we'll see if we actually get there. What ends up happening is that I get very busy because of work and we aren't able to record it. So we'll see if it happens this time. Uh, and then, of course, a points reward system that you can see here. The one thing that is notable is that there's a single ticket here at 1.8 million points. <laughs> Which is very funny, but uh, if you need a lot of golden apples, this will give you plenty of apples, which is going to be good to build up on your apples because um, we got a lotto coming up um, a couple months from now, so it's good to actually start building up for it and start saving for lotto if you can. Uh, and finally, we have the summoning campaign, which first I'll go over the actual main unit which is going to be the free-to-play unit, and then I'll go over the summon banner itself. So we're going to start with EO. Here's EO. She's a ruler. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Four hits on the quick, four hits on the arts, three hits on the buster, five hits on the extra. Her first skill is Keto Destruction B. Increases own arts performance for three turns. Increases own damage against divinity enemies for three turns, and inflicts curse uh, with a thousand damage for five turns to all enemies. 30% to arts. 50% to divinity damage and a cooldown of 6. Second skill is Dark Oracle B. Charges on MP gauge, increases on critical star absorption of arts cards for one turn, and then increases on critical damage of arts cards for one turn. MP up is 30%, the arts absorption is 500%, and the arts crit damage is 100% on a cooldown of 6. Shrine Maiden of the End is her third skill. In an increase of party's attack for three turns, increases the critical damage of wild beast alleys for three turns, and then gain 10 crit stars. 20% to attack. 50% to uh, crit damage to wild beasts, uh, to uh, specifically wild beast allies, <laughs> my bad. Cooldown of 5. Magic resist. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Territory Creation B, Natural Limbs B, and Kuna's Mantra C, which is an increase to own uh, quick performance by 5%, increases own crit damage of quick cards by 10%, and then grants self the wild beast trait, which is pretty nice. Her third skill is the Anti-Foreigner Attack Damage Aptitude, which is an increase to own attack against foreigner enemies. And her Noble Phantasm is the Yoyami Yo Kagaratsuki no Mitama, the Divine Pearl of the Dusk Shadowed Moon, Anti-Army Rank C, its arts, hits four times, increases own MP damage by 10% for three turns, activates first, which is important, deals damage to all enemies, inflicts curse status for three turns to them, Evil Curse is an increase of curse damage uh, by 100%. The damage of MP is at level 1, 450%, and because she's a Welfare, you'll be able to get her to MP5, and that's 750%. And then she inflicts curse on um, allies for 3 turns. At charge level 1, the curse damage is 1,000. And then if you get all the way to the final charge level, it's 3,000. And of course, she has her own special costume dress, which the costume dress just makes it so that she removes the headgear. Which is pretty nice. I, similar to Himiko, as much as I really do like this design, I like this. I like. I prefer her without the headdress. I don't know why. It might just be because I just really dig this outfit. I don't know. Don't look too deep into it. But anyway, that's EO. <laughs> EO's a really good unit, especially uh, for a welfare. Maybe it's just because I've been most recently uh, delving into uh, some Dokkan stuff because it is the most recent anniversary. But I'm like, I don't know why I have to add, oh, you know, for a welfare. The welfares in Fago are typically really, really good. <laughs> That's why we don't get a lot of them, I think, anymore. Because they actually make them super interesting nowadays. Uh, back in the old days, maybe it was a little bit more like, eh, you know, this is more just a free four star. But I think nowadays, whenever they design them, they have them with the mind of like, no, this unit is actually going to be super good and solid. And that's what EO is. She can be used as a free looper. Her being ruler does kind of hurt in because I've tried to explain this in the past and I was really bad at explaining it. So let me try and explain it again. They usually have a damage problem and it's because I thought originally it was because of the fact that they only have uh, they have like low base damage, but that's not true. They actually have like 1.1. The problem is, is that they don't have type advantage against a lot of units. So what ends up happening a lot of time when you have them at low NP levels is that sometimes they can fail to kill the enemy just because they, unless you're fighting a berserker or an entire team of moon cancer dudes, 
Um, it doesn't come up very often. But because she's a welfare, you, it's a free NP5 on her. So that's 750%. So it's a little bit better than a lot of other rulers who you might have to go in a little bit deeper if you want to get them a little bit stronger and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of looping, she should be perfectly good at it. She gets a 30% bonus to her arts. She has an ability to charge her own MP. She hits at least four times. She increases her MP damage every turn, basically, for the three turns that are there. If for whatever reason something does live and she doesn't fully kill it off, I think the evil curse stuff will eventually get them. So in terms of looping, it seems like she'd be a really good solid option for someone who is starting off or is someone who already, who, who in general already likes EO, which me, that I'll have plenty of use out of her because I love, uh, I love uh, her sister, so I'm also expecting to like her as well. So, really good on that front, but also outside of looping, she also has some interesting stuff, like obviously the bonus against divinity enemies, which is 50%. This curse ability here, which like evil curse, which is <laughs> evil curse say do even more damage, which is uh, pretty nice. Making this 1,000 go into 200, 2,000 is what I, I was about to say, 20,000. That'd be insane. But you see what I'm saying. These, this curse will just do more damage to them, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I like her having this crit damage stuff, which is really interesting, um, especially with the new Lady Avalon. Um, for one turn, it's possible for you to have an insane turn of art stuff, like being able to do your AoE. Hit them up and then with your two final arts cards, get them 100. And then by the end of that, you should have your NP back and everything. Um, and then she also has some other support if you're ever using someone who's actually a wild beast, just like her. So unfortunately, there's not like a lot of wild beast options. But there are some, which makes it kind of a fun little gimmick thing if you're ever in a situation where you're like, you know what? I do want to use her with red hair and for some reason, Daikokuten. <laughs> It's a very silly thing. Uh, it's not very practical in the large scheme of thing, but I do like that she has it. Also, this ability giving her 10 crit stars also meshes really well with the second skill. So even if you don't have that much um, crit stars, it's possible for you to take whatever little you can from the 10 crit stars. And then with this Arbs of Absorption, hopefully get it to the one single arts card that you have or something and make it do a lot of damage for that single turn. So that's EO. I think she's a really stellar free welfare. That's a, a great stuff. I can't wait to get Get her and use her myself she seems fun especially with the event giving her a hundred percent damage bonus oh so <laughs> sounds great love it <laughs> i love i love me a good arts looper which is funny because we get so many of them now especially with the reveal that the the bb dubai is also another <laughs> arts looper it's really funny how many of these we get it's insane anyway the banner time! We have Senno Rikyo and Kaisuke over here, which I believe his name is uh, Yama, Yamanami? Yamanami? Sure, let's go with that. And Mori. Mori is a limited 3-star. I won't go over his specific kit, but he is limited, so he's kind of a pain in the ass to get. So if you want to get your Mori up and running, this is your chance to get him to MP5. Typically, the other one that they have here is um, Izzo which you can see right here in his CE. But Izzo isn't featured on any of the Guda Guda ones for some reason on this year. Like, even on Summoning Campaign 2, he's not on here. Interesting. But anyway, these are the units on it, and then the limited rate up craft essences. Like I said, boom, I told you I would come back to it. Resentment from the Underworld, which is an Ignore of Infants ability, Buster up 3%, MP damage up 15%, and will give you a bonus to the bull when you have it. It's not here is the four star. It gives arts plus 3%, crit damage plus 5%, MP overcharge plus one stage plus one time, plus uh, Uban drops. And then of course the bronze, which is of course featuring Medusa. Results of the soil, damage cut minus 100, quick plus 3% and gives you some bronze material stuff, which is the T-Whisk. Basic stuff, nothing too crazy that jumps to my mind right now, but also my mind is maybe running on... Um, What's that thing called when it's empty? It's run. What? Are you running on adrenaline? Yeah, adrenaline in my soul. Cody Rhodes is going to talk about Kaisuke now. Uh, you are correct. It was adrenaline I was thinking of. Kaisuke, Saber. Two quick, two arts, one buster, three hits on quick, two hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. His active skills are warrior but illiterate. Nope. 
warrior but literate. I was illiterate for that th couple seconds there. C, increase, I also feel like I used that word wrong. Increases party's attack for three turns, increases party's MP generation rate for three turns, gain 10 crit stars, 20% to attack, 20% uh, to MP rate, and a cooldown of six. His second skill is Beauty of Nature C, increases own quick performance for three turns, increases own arts performance for three turns, charges own MP gauge by 20%, 30%, and 30% to quick and arts, and a cooldown of six. The kind one grants party evasion for one attack three turns, uh, recovers party's HP, uh, removes party's alignment debuffs, which is of course curse, poison, and burning, uh, and heal 3000 on the cooldown of six. His two passive skills are magic resistance D and writing E, increases own quick performance by 2%. Uh, third skill is an anti-berserker attack damage aptitude, um, and his noble phantasm is the Yamazukura, the mountain sakura, rank D, arts, anti-army, increases party's attack for three turns, gain 10 crit stars every turn for three turns, and then increase crit damage of Shinsengumi servant allies by 50% for three turns. At MP level 1, it's 20% attack, it's 20% uh, up attack, and then if you get him to MP level 5, 40%. And then charges party's MP gauge, uh, the charge effect is 10% at charge level 1, and if you get them all the way to the final charge level, it's 30%. That's Kaisuke! This is going to be a very easy unit to talk about because um, the only reason you would ever use him is if you want to use him in a challenge quest and you want to use him next to Shinsengumi dudes. That's about it. There's not like out of, outside of that specific scenario of I want to do a challenging fight and I want to beat them with the Shinsengumi members, he's not very good. Um... He has some okay stuff, like I do like MP generation rate on units, and the fact that that gives it the party is pretty nice. I think the thing that's kind of killer, though, is the fact that this second skill is a buff to himself. Like, he buffs his quick and arts, which is nice, but it's like, bro, you're a supporter. That, that, that doesn't really mean much. Uh, I guess it's nice that you charge your own MP gauge, though. Maybe I'm missing something on here, but it definitely feels okay. like... Hmm? Okay, good. Thank you. My brother is affirming it, but I'm, I'm just to confirm, this is a very bad skill. <laughs> this would be a pretty okay skill at any other unit that was like DPS, but to put this on a support unit feels like a waste. Um, yes, like my brother said in the background, he's just kind of a fun unit to use. That's what you would want to use him for. I also do like the party, grant party evasion attack, because that can come in handy. Along with the removing ail ailment debuffs, which can come in handy in a specific challenge quest that requires this. Um, but yeah, in general, this Noble Phantasm, I think, is actively bad. This is like what a skill does. This is almost pretty close to what his first skill does. Which is like, <laughs> his first skill gives 20% attack. And you're telling me his entire Noble Phantasm is 20% attack unless you get him to MP level 5, in which case that's 40 it's a little bit bad. But again, I think he's a unit that you really want to use for fun with the Shinsen Gumi allies. And that's basically it. And I think everyone can kind of understand that. It's a little bit unfortunate if you were like a big fan of his design. Because I actually do think his design looks pretty nice. Um, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> he's a Shinsen... If, you, if you're just super into the Shinsen Gumi, congratulations. This is your guy for it. But that's Kaisuke. And then we have Sen no Rikyu, which is the fantastic unit that is in this banner. This is the, if you're pulling on this banner, um, your chances are pulling for him, for 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 her. So Rikyu, she's a berserker, three quicks, one arts, one buster, five hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. Her active skills are simplicity at its finest, a minus, increase to party's quick performance for three turns, increases the party's MP generate for three turns. Gain crit stars, um, which is 15, um, 15 crit stars. MP rate up and attack uh, quick up is 20% on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is a single flower B. Charges one ally's MP gauge and then overcharges their MP by two stages for one time three turns. Grants them invincibility for one attack three turns on a 30% MP on a cooldown of 6. Her third skill is a mysteriously profundity of black A. Increase to own crit damage for three turns. Increases own crit damage of quick cards for three turns. Then grants self a debuff on attack buff for three turns. Inflicts defense down for by 10% for three turns to enemies when attacking with quick cards. Activates first. Crit damage is 50% and the quick crit damage is 50% on a cooldown of six. Her passive skills are madness enhancement, Sabi. Territory creation, Wabi. Artistic Aesthetic T, and then Unfettered and Flexible B. And this one is uh, special because it is an increase to own MP generation rate of quick cards by 10%. Her, 
Her third skill is an anti-saber critical attack chance resistance. And our noble phantasm is Ichigo, Ichi E, one time, one meeting, rank C, barrier type noble phantasm. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, hits six times and it's quick. Deals damage to all enemies, seals their NP for one turn, inflicts curse by 1,000 for five turns to them. In MP level one, the damage is 600%, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 1,000. And then she deals extra damage against enemies with the man attribute. 150% at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 200%. And that is Rikyu over here. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that name right, because I feel like I am specifically saying it like I say, um... Uh, there's a specific movie with Rikyu in it, so I think like I'm Rikyo. That's the <laughs> that's the thing I'm thinking of, so if I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's because, because of Rikyo. Anyway, Rikyu is a fantastic, uh... Berserker uh, Quick Looper, for sure, 100%. Everything about her is designed to make it so that she is the best one. I think currently on the NA side of the game, I think the only units we have that are Berserker and Quick AoE are the Horseman, um, who is a 5-star, and then we have Lancelot, and I think that's basically it. Uh, and she immediately would replace them hands down. It's it's not even a contest what she does. She What she does is insane. So a lot of the problems when it comes to quick units in particular is that usually what ends up happening is that because of the way that Summer Scotty and regular Scotty work, you need to reach exactly 50% on the second and the third turn after you use your Noble Phantasm. The reason is, is because... Specifically, both of the skills that increase MP are both 50%, so you can't like just cut and dive it. Like for example, with Castoria, you have one that's 30% and the other one that's 20%, so if you're ever in a scenario where it's like, well, this one specifically just needs 40%, so I can just cut it up like that, no. What happens with her is that you need exactly this amount, and if you miss it, then you're going to be screwed for the final one, and so it makes, or, uh, it makes quick looping a little bit of a problem. The other thing that's kind of an issue is that with quick... Um, with a lot of quick units, you run into the problem of NP gain, and a lot of units on, um, they need MP gain specifically to get back their NP. A lot of them can't get back to 100%, because that's where a lot of arts units are kind of built into here. But what they need to do is to get to a lot of at least 50%, and a lot of them actually kind of struggle with it, because they're just not doing enough damage to hit, uh, the enemy, and then going into overcharge, and then with the bonus hits that they give... That will give you more overcharge and then more NP gain, and that will kind of get you there. It's the reason why Quick is probably one of the highest investments in terms of um, building teams for it, because there's a lot of like factors that go into it that can screw you at random intervals. Um, that just makes it very hard for you to actually get it done. If you ever wondered like when you're specifically looping with Quick units and you're going like, damn, why isn't this working? It's because there's so many like factors in the back end that the others just don't have to deal with. Like for example, Arts doesn't give a shit about MP gain at all because they have it so many of it just built in. Um, and Buster just doesn't care. As long as they can get to the next loop, they can go for it. But Quick has so many things factoring it for it, it makes it a little bit annoying to do it. But frankly, Rikyu Fiends feels specifically designed to counter any problem with it. I have a problem with MP generation, it's fine. Her quick cards in general will always do 10% more. Um, it's okay because of the she gives herself quick performance up. She gives herself MP more generation up by an additional 20%. She, has also, she also gives it to the party, which is also pretty funny. Um, she has the ability to give overcharge to herself, right, two stages, which is pretty funny in this case because all it does is give mask extra to the man attribute. But... It's still very nice, and this is chargeable to anyone, so this doesn't really fully affect it. But this third skill actually does, because, again, like I said, sometimes it can be an issue of, like, you need to quickly deal damage to them so you can quickly get them into um, the state in which you can um, start doing over damage to them and quickly get to them. She gives a, a, non, uh, a debuff on attack, which means when she goes for her Noble Phantasm, because it's a quick card, assuming that I'm getting this right, if I get this wrong, feel free to correct me on it, um... She'll be able to inflict defense down before she loses her Noble Phantasm, which will just help in general. So everything about her feels specifically designed to counteract any of the negative effects that might come from um, using a quick unit of some kind. <laughs> it seems it's specifically built that way. Which is pretty nice. Um, so I think she'll end up being 
Um, she'll everyone knows this at this point. Anyone that's going for her, she's a, a crazy unit. Um, and if you're using her outside of trying to just loop, I think she's still pretty good. The one thing she's missing, I think, uh, is the ability to actually have um, guts of some kind. She does have some defensive capability. She does have this invisibility that you can see right here, which is at least one attack for three turns, which means if they don't hit her, then she's fine. But that also means if they hit her once and then they go to hit her again, then you're kind of in trouble. Um... That's nice that she has that. She has the ability to seal enemies' NP, but outside of that, there's not really much of anything. But if you could just quickly whittle him down and have a war of attrition, or you have some kind of way to protect her of some kind of uh, in some kind of fashion, she can pretty quickly get them down and kill them pretty quick. Especially when she's giving herself basically a hundred percent crit damage whenever she's using a, a quick card, and she has three of them built into her. It's pretty nice. Plus, if you're using, depending on which summer, uh, which Scotty you're using, uh, either it's summer, she'll get 100% up to her Buster, which, because of her Madness Enhancement, she already gets a Buster performance up of 10% and an increase of crit damage by 50%. Really damn nice. In general, yeah, this seems like a really good-ass unit. I, Plenty of people are going to be going for her, and I don't blame them. I'm going to also be trying, mainly because I want to get Kaisuke for any potential videos I want to do with my brother where we would... If, when I said the specific scenario of, man, wouldn't it be fun to use a full Shinsengumi team? We are the specific audience of, man, we should get a full. <laughs> we should get Kaisuke. One of us needs to get Kaisuke so that we could run a full <laughs> Shinsengumi team. Minus base Okita because I'm still missing her. Um... So yeah, I'm going to say once again, I wish you all the best of luck. There will be a summon video. I think in the past I said, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I think because of how well summer went, I think I can afford three multis to try. So it'll be worth it going for. And plus, I really do like quick a lot. Um, you can tell by the way that I talk about the specific, <laughs> some of the issues I've run into quick. Those are all the issues I've run with like trying to get my specific quick units up and running i'm like damn i just need more that's all the the things i said specifically it's like damn Sai, say why can't you just be slightly better in mp gain why are you like this summer ushiwakamaru why can't you reach over the threshold why and anyway that's enough talking about that uh best of luck to everyone summoning and of course there is another summoning campaign which will feature Demon King Nobunaga, Hijikata, Himiko, Okita, Izumi no Koni, Ajikita Alter, Sakamoto Ryoma, Lancer, Oda Nobunaga, Summer, Saita Hajime, Okita J. Soji, which is also known as Summer Okita, Mori as well, who will feature on all of them. But I will fe talk about those at a later date when we get closer to the time to talking about it, just because there will be a little bit more time to actually talk about the units. But for the most part, unless you have a specific want for any of these, I think these are pretty easy to skip like i know for a fact that like there's one dude who just super loves nobunaga and keeps dropping crazy nobunaga facts on me or something related to it so i know for a fact plenty of people love Lo nobunaga and if i did not have himiko i would definitely still keep going for himiko but thankfully i have himiko so i don't have to worry about it because i love himiko um but yeah, I'll talk about those units at a later date. But that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I can please show some support. Um, there's been a lot of support for the channel recently, and I'm very thankful for it. It's what lets me be able to uh, immediately record this video and be like, yo, I'm so fucking tired that I wish I didn't have to speak for a little bit. But I know there's enough people that were like, hey, when are you going to be talking about this? And I'm like, no, I need to do this. So thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it a whole bunch. I'll see you guys in a later video, and hopefully I won't be as tired as I am now. So, Well, by the way, are you going to be summoning, boy, on Rikyu? Yeah. Okay. My my brother will also be summoning, so there'll be <laughs> surely one of us will get something. So there we go. Until next time, everyone, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.